let us pray first. Almighty and loving Father, Creator of heaven and earth, we praise you and adore you. You are the King of kings. We humbly ask your forgiveness for our sins. Have mercy us, O Lord. We are gathered here today for our Parents and Guardians Orientation Webinar on Online Learning. Send us your Holy Spirit to be our guide and give us the wisdom to understand every topic that we are going to discuss. Enlighten our minds and let your love be upon us. May this orientation webinar bring success and growth to our team. We thank you, Father, for this precious time that you have given us. All this we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. <clears throat> A pleasant day to all of you, dear parents and guardians, and welcome to our orientation webinar on our school's type of online learning or teaching modality that we will use this academic year 2020-2021 to deliver the teacher's lessons or content to our students. This is Elmer M. Sadikon, your school principal and resource speaker. Please be informed that this webinar is pre-recorded. This means that you can play and watch it again if you like or if there are still points that you want to comprehend more. I hope that my presentation today will shed light to your misconception pertaining online learning. Likewise, I might include short discussion about home and school partnership, proper decorum or behavior and etiquettes while your children are attending their online classes. <clears throat> Gone are the days of traditional classrooms and face-to-face -face learning as the COVID-19 pandemic changes the way we live. The demand for a more flexible learning opportunity also increased. To address this growing necessity, the Pleasant Mount School for the academic year 2020-2021 has now shifted to online learning as its major teaching modality to deliver instruction to students who are at home, thus making our school a virtual campus through our own learning management system known as Pleasantites Alternative Learning System or PALS. A virtual campus is an online presence where we bring the community of learners and teachers. What is online learning? Online learning is a form of learning that uses internet as a tool for education. There is a physical distance between students and teachers, but they can interact during virtual lectures and other online assessments. Classes are open scheduled at a specific time with students needing to be online to attend the virtual lecture. In this setup, students can also discuss the lecture or ask questions to their teachers in real time. Additionally, they can interact with fellow students via online platforms. In the new normal, our teachers should transform how they teach online especially since online tools and resources present numerous options or choices that teachers and students can take advantage of. Teachers can select or curate the best online learning resources about their topics 
and create learning playlists or menus that can make the learning process a personal journey for every student. They should avoid being a content dumper, but instead be a master curator of resources that enable engaging and deeper learning. Moreover, teachers should design effective synchronous and asynchronous learning activities that enable sustained engagement, self-regulation, voice, and choice in students. Allow me to distinguish synchronous learning from asynchronous learning. Synchronous learning is the kind of learning that happens in real time. This means that the members of the class and the teacher interact in a specific virtual place through a specific online medium at a specific time. In other words, it is not exactly anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Methods of synchronous online learning include video conferencing, teleconferencing, live chatting, and live streaming lectures through online platforms like Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, among others. What about asynchronous learning? Asynchronous learning happens on your schedule or your child's schedule. While your course of study, the teacher will provide materials for reading, lectures for viewing, assignments for completing, and exams for evaluation. You have the ability to access and satisfy these requirements within a flexible time frame. Methods of asynchronous online learning include self-guided lesson modules, streaming video content, activity sheets or assessments, and PowerPoint presentations, which are all pre-recorded and uploaded in your child's Google Classroom. There are three essential ingredients in PMS Pulse. They are the coach, content, and cohort. The coach refers to the teacher. Content refers to the learning materials or the lessons. And the cohort refers to our community consists of students and teacher formators alike. As you can see in this slide, what we are trying to do here is really online learning that is the block in the middle, which means that when an online learning is conducted, it is asynchronous or not in real time. In other words, the teacher's discussion and lesson content are pre-recorded. Except in preschool and or grades 1 to 3, we are not going to do remote learning or synchronous learning or live streaming more often only when needed. When this modality is performed, it is primarily the coach conducting an online class 
in an actual time and so with the presentation of the content done live. So this is what happens when you are doing Zoom conference call or Google Meet or essentially the teachers giving lectures on the screen. Neither are we doing the other extreme, which is distance learning. It's still primarily asynchronous. So the content or learning materials, such as modules from the teachers, are independently addressed or managed or studied by the student. This is what we call self-face. Indeed, he can still ask questions or seek help from the cohort when the need arises. In this type of modality, it is the student reading the PDF files, watch YouTube videos, or working on a textbook in his own time. But definitely, PMS Pulse is not going to be solely distance learning. Again, we will focus more on the middle, which is asynchronously online learning, where we use a little remote teaching, a little distance learning, and a lot of continuous interaction between and among teachers and students. So we want to keep that community alive, fresh and current. What is the length of time students will be on screen? To answer this question, it is important to define first learning time. Learning time refers to estimated or projected time students are expected to accomplish a lesson from start to finish. It means to say that students need to be on task. When we say students are on task, they can be either doing any of the following. First, in-class tasks. Second, online tasks. Third, on-screen tasks. And fourth, offline and off-screen tasks. Let's define this task one by one. So when we say in-class tasks, this refer to the virtual classroom experiences like the video conference. Online tasks, these activities in a way are internet related and needless to say, these tasks require the use of a device. They may, this may include participating in a chat room or discussion board, interacting with peers for a group project or even taking an assessment. On screen tasks, these activities do not require the use of internet but are still device dependent. Meaning to say, you can only be, you can only do on-screen tasks like listening to a pre-recorded lecture or reading a reference material if you have the device but not necessarily the internet. Offline and off-screen tasks. These activities neither require face-to-face -face or real-time interactions, nor the need to be on screen, 
yet they still form part of the learning time. So this is depending on the lesson and activities which may be one or a combination of any of the four tasks. It will also vary depending on the grade level, age, lesson, uh, or subject matter, and the preference of the teacher. Online learning may be new and different for the students, as well as for our dear parents and guardians, but it also allows them to learn in a supportive and convenient atmosphere in this unprecedented time. So the students should remain persistent and adaptive to grab this opportunity of learning through virtual classes. DepEd Under Secretary Annalyn Sibilia said that the cooperation and support coming from parents and guardians will be very important as the entire basic education system braces for the so-called new normal. In the new normal, there should be a stronger home and school partnership that can facilitate better and more consistent communication and collaboration between teachers and parents. Communication of learning goals, expectations, and feedback can help sustain the needed collaborative relationship between the parents, the guardians, and the teachers. To do this, we can create opportunities that can teach parents how to navigate the online learning environment, guide their children as they learn online, and even nourish their children's curiosity at home. So as we explore these possibilities for partnership, we should always keep in mind the need to maintain and guard our institution's integrity and independence from any self-serving motives that can interfere with our school's mission, vision, and objectives. As we navigate the intersections of the physical and digital spheres in our lives, the new normal is calling us to develop essential skills that can help us to adapt and thrive in an uncertain future. One thing that the pandemic has taught and reminded us is to have the skills of flexibility, adaptability, and empathy to face the unknown. These skills are not learned and mastered instantly. They are developed over time through our life experiences. These are invaluable skills that we can add in our personal toolkits in facing life's challenges and thriving in an uncertain future. In the end, regardless of what mode of work or learning we are called to do or be part of the skills of flexibility, adaptability, and empathy can surely help us to make sense of and adjust well to the immediate call of the times without burning ourselves out or losing our sanity over things. For your children, dear parents, giving them more opportunities to practice and develop these skills is one way of preparing them for life beyond the physical or virtual walls of the classroom. Growth Mindset 
appreciation of mistakes, and being resilient are important life lessons that you can impart to them at this time of pandemic. Teaching them to empathize with other people and challenging them to help the other members of the society can make the new normal more bearable, especially for those who are in the margin of the society. On July 24, 2020, during the live streaming of our meet and greet activity or kumustahan with the students last school year, I heard teachers urging children to mute their microphone and wait for their turn to speak. You know, it's not a typical classroom. There are children scribbling on the screen or incessantly chat with their friends in the chat window while the class is on or parents zooming past the screen, murmuring things in their ears. It is in this regard that we urge students and parents to follow a proper decorum or behavior even with online classes. Talking about etiquettes, children have to be ready in their seats 15 minutes before the classes start. Just because they are attending classes from home, it does not mean they can come right from the bed. They have to maintain neatness and hygiene at all times. A few students tend, tend to take classes while lying down. I have to constantly point it out to them. When you are lying, your brain is in a sleeping mode. If you keep your body alert, the mind stays alert. While all teachers agree in tandem that there's no substitute for having students in the classroom where they can make them learn under proper guidance and sharply monitor their learning and growth. But there are some rules and regulations that every child and his parent or guardian need to follow. First, sit in a proper formal setup. Next, sit upright and keep the camera at a little distance. Next, do not eat during the class. Third, parents should not shout or howl in the background. Next, create a learning environment for the child with less distractions. If possible, the child should wear headphones to minimize distractions and disturbances. Next, there should not be continuous movement where the child sits. Encourage children to use magic words like, excuse me, I'm sorry, mom, I didn't get it to maintain the decor, to min I didn't get it to maintain the decorum of a classroom. And a child should answer only when it's his turn. Let's not forget that education is not the work of teachers alone. Collaboration and partnership play crucial roles in sustaining learning at this time of the pandemic. Teachers, parents, school leaders, and external partners 
have to work together to address the many challenging issues of remote or online learning. So in the end, collaboration makes life's challenges not necessarily easier, but more bearable. So with that, I hope that I was able to enlighten your mind in as far as our online classes for this school year 2020-2021 is concerned. So thank you so much in advance for your support and understanding with our imperfections as we embark with this uncertain future. Once again, good day to all.